If anyone didn't know, I've been in Austin, Texas for the past week, and MSI, a computer component company that I am currently part of their Dragon Squad program with a lot of other YouTubers, took a lot of us influencers over to see AMD and get a campus tour in Austin, Texas. And there's future cooperation and trips and things that might happen in the future as well. And anyway, today I'm just going to take you through the whole trip and just sort of a vlog video for you all just to know what I got up to. And we started out in London Heathrow and I'd had the clever idea of going, going the night before, going through the underground, getting to the airport at about 12 a.m. GMT and the flight was at 8.30 a.m. in the morning so I had a long wait in an empty airport. I've never seen anything so weird as a whole empty airport terminal. At about 5.30 I met up with quite a few of the UK gang that were going over. There are actually five of us YouTubers, some tech channels, some gamers. And in the UK Fantastic Five we had Lutin, Lionheart X10, Red Gaming Tech and Tech Team GB. It really made the trip less of a pain and when we hopped onto the plane to Canada there was actually nobody on there so we were all able to have a lie down across like five seats and being five Brits got a lot of banter in and honestly those were great guys and so glad that I got to meet them at the airport before we went down and calm my nerves a bit because I've never really done anything like this. Coming off the empty plane to Canada we got into a very weird walker later where it almost sort of stamps up and clumps together to try and trap your feet. I've never seen anything like it. It must just be a Canadian thing. The flight to Texas was a little bit more packed and getting there, walking out into the outside, it was like being blasted by an oven. I haven't been that hot for a very long time and even though it was mild, apparently the Texans said, it was like being blasted in a furnace for us English folk. We got bussed down to the hotel and a surprise was waiting for me and I've already done a video on the unboxing of the MSI Dragon Squad surprise which had a Ryzen 1600X, a dragon inside and a new motherboard the Tomahawk B350 from MSI, which I'll probably be doing something with a little bit later on. We got a welcome dinner, but after that I pretty much passed out out of complete jet lag and exhaustion and pretty much not sleeping. The next day we were woken up and I got to talk a bit more to the rest of the content creators there like Blunty3000 from Australia, Wendell, Air of Carthage, TechSource, MSI's guys and other great people that were there. We headed towards the AMD campus and, and luckily because MSI was the first partner to be united to have a campus tour like this so we were the first ones to enter the lines then. As soon as we got there we got a welcome speech from Gerald Youngblood, the Senior Director of Component Marketing, Social and Operations. He shared some of AMD's vision but also about his own son and how he'd help him make a build with I think it was a Ryzen build and it reminded me a bit of my building days although it was quite different originally and I got a Packard Bell all-in-one computer pre-built and then started upgrading it bit by bit trying to get a graphics card in. I think I tried to upgrade at the time to try and play Oblivion. It was that long ago and eventually I got to the point maybe I was 14 maybe 15 I can't remember exactly where I decided to build my own computer and that feeling is amazing so always sharing a younger person getting into PC building always gets me in the feels. I think it's a great thing for anybody to do and especially if you're younger it's so easy and pretty fun to get into. We also got a pretty in-depth overclocking guide for Ryzen on an MSI motherboard and basically we got info on what made Ryzen different and how currently engineers are working quite quickly with vendors to iron out some of the kinks that Ryzen has and obviously a lot of videos have been on Ryzen changing in performance pretty wildly from then to now and things like the HPET needing to be turned off and being changed or tweaked can help out gaming performance so showing the percentages on that and also things like the sensor me the the sort of AI on the Ryzen wasn't quite being used fully by vendors and obviously BIOS updates and things like that coming will increase the stability and performance ultimately of Ryzen going forward. It's quite relieving how honest they were about the competition and talked a lot about Intel and owned up to the fact that obviously the Ryzen line with the 5 and the 7 almost mirrors the naming convention of i7 and i5s. We got to look around the outside of the campus and it was a pretty beautiful view but something interesting about America is I could see the hotel from that building but the actual distance and time traveled in a car was quite long and actually when we were in our hotel we tried to get across the road but there literally wasn't anywhere to walk not even a path not even a pavement you had to literally get a car somewhere like a taxi and that to me as like somebody from Europe everywhere has like either a path like going through a field or a pavement and it just seems so different. Also in the MD campus they pretty much had a full arcade going on with American games like shuffleboard and it was just pretty damn fun to play around with that. 
and get, got caught slouching watching some Futurama. We also got a look at MSI's motherboard lineup for the Ryzen AM4 socket, which is currently the most comprehensive out there. Obviously, I've already reviewed the X370 Titanium before I was partnered, and a few of the other boards and graphics cards, which you can always check out in my old videos, in my Joshino's Gaming Hardware Corner. And there are also PCs set up with the Mystic Lighting uh, synced up, so obviously with, with MSI you can sync up with a LED socket on the motherboard to strips, LED strips in the board, in the case, and also to the fans, like the AMD Racespire, as one of their Ryzen coolers, it has an LED ring that you can sync up with the rest of the computer. It was pretty damn cool to look at, seeing as I didn't have any LED strips myself, or didn't have the Racespire to test it out when I was trying out the boards. We also learned about the four main segments of MSI's boards, which also sort of interline with what AMD are trying to do with the boards, the board designs for Ryzen. So on MSI side, there's a Master of the Game Enthusiast boards, which are the X370 boards. These are the important parts. The X370 is a classification, and this is a high-end performance gaming board. It has all of the features, and also it has dual PCI times six, so you can have two SLI and three times cross crossfire on that board. The next up is the performance gaming, which are on custom PCBs, and they're mostly these X370 boards still, but there are some B350s, which I'm also going to talk about when I talk about the third segment, the Arsenal. Uh, and these are like the Tomahawk motherboard, which I got in that box. And the B350 has less PCI lanes, so it can only have a one NVIDIA card or two in Crossfire on the AMD cards, but one of them is in a lower speed. The B350 still has overclocking and the X370 has overclocking too. And there are also in the fourth segment business motherboards. And then there's the essential motherboards which are in the classification of A320. And A320 you can't overclock on and have the most basic features. It was interesting hearing all of this and it's quite useful going into what you need to buy. I think most people out there probably only need the B350 if not the A320 if you are not getting an overclockable Ryzen CPU. MSI came in and showed off their own features. I've talked about the Mystic Lighting syncing up all of the lighting. They also talked about the, the M.2 Shield, which basically is a cooling solution. I, I talked about it on my X370 review on top of the uh, M.2 SSD devices. It's also like an anti-static protection and it just generally looks pretty cool and makes the thing look a bit more premium. There's also the AXMP, MSI's one-click button to overclock memory and sort out memory profiles on the AM4 Ryzen boards. Like I said before, they gave us a pretty intensive AMD overclocking guide and also performance stats on gaming with uh, Ryzen, even with NVIDIA graphics cards. I think they were saying basically at the moment, they knew that obviously the NVIDIA cards are the most premium at the moment and obviously you probably aren't going to get the RX 580 and pair it with an 1800X and uh, be doing super gaming, you're obviously going to get the sort of Pascal, the NVIDIA Titan X or something, you're going to be getting the, eight, the 1080s if you really want the super high end for 4K, but at the same time Vega is coming very soon, so they were being quite honest and open about NVIDIA being the powerhouses at the moment. But obviously we've got to we've got to wait to maybe Computech or whenever Vega is going to be announced, which may be towards the end of this month. On day three, we had another tour of the campus, but this time looking quite in depth at what was going on there. We looked at historic hardware and things that are currently in operation that you wouldn't normally think of as AMD. Things like slot machines, jukeboxes running on these AMD APUs or hardware in general. And also we got to play on a full AMD Ryzen with an RX 480, I think. I don't think it was a 580. Playing some VR games. And I tried to make a dragon in the tilt brush. And uh, it looked great inside the VR system, but everyone just laughed at me outside and I was like, what would you mean? Step back and it looked like a big blob. So it's quite, it's quite funny on the VR and playing zombies as well. And then after that, we had a quick esports update on what AMD are doing in the esports realm because they're currently working with Fnatic, which have teams in mainly CSGO and they're also working with Chill Blast in the UK to make a Fnatic PC and things like that and also about the smaller teams that they have involvement with like some of the Overwatch teams and it got me thinking a bit about some of the smaller teams and games that are sort of up and coming smaller scenes but I thought like I asked originally like had they ever thought about picking up the top teams in smaller games because if AMD picked up some of the teams in Paladins then they probably would have as much exposure as some of the lower teams that they were picking up in bigger games like CSGO or Overwatch. And there's probably more kudos to have the champions 
under your wing than uh, just some that came 13th. But they didn't say they had any plans as of yet, but it just got my mind ticking a little bit. After that, AMD, very kindly, because we didn't actually have any barbecue slotted in or planned, which would have been sacrilege being in uh, Austin, Texas or Texas in general. And we got some barbecue from a company called Slab. Texan barbecue was amazing. We had brisket sliders, these chicken sliders, and we had the barbecue ribs, all of which were so tender and they were gorgeous. And especially for me, that I like, I really like some good ribs. And these ribs, I've not had ribs like this before in the UK. Like in the UK, they're not, they're not great to be honest. And it was almost like there was like a gammony taste that we would normally associate with some really good quality pork in the UK or ham. And honestly, I haven't tasted any barbecue like that before. It was a 10 out of 10. And thanks to AMD for chipping in, they bought it for us and everything. And it wasn't it wasn't planned, so it was pretty damn amazing. And honestly, the guy coming in was so friendly. He was almost like because everyone had a camera, he looked like a bit struck and was like, "Oh, this is this, this is that." It was pretty awesome. After that, MSI set up all of their own computers with I think there were B three fifty motherboards inside, and Wraith Cooler and some Ryzen. I don't know which Ryzen CPU it was, but we're only playing LOL. But I mean, it generally played well. I was playing in one hundred forty four hertz on a four K monitor. I actually changed it up because Edgar from TechSource came behind me and was like, put this to 144 hertz, it's not set on. So I had to, I'd set it on myself. But we played our hardest at LOL and there were three of us from the UK. Me and Todd Lionheart, eight times 10, had both played Dota 2 before. So I guess we had a little bit of a head start and obviously Dota's a bit of a harder game. So obviously we had, uh, you know, a bit more experience. And we're actually against some Taiwanese players that played LOL quite a bit on streaming and stuff. We won both rounds, which made us the uh, grand champions. So obviously uh, the Dota 2 experience paid off. It was only ARG, I think it is, the, the random draft. And there's only 3v3, so it wasn't exactly like anything super competitive but i think uh me amy and todd we we took them down pretty well and we also won some giant msi dragons which i had to get through customs and things like that although all of the american customs were like oh look at that cute little dragon <laughs> and it's it actually pretty easy to get it on i didn't actually think it would be so team uk prevailed and for a very bright future of uk esports gaming seems like there isn't that much of an e uk esports scene to be honest so maybe this is the start of something <laughs> Finally that night we went on a duck tour. Now we were told in a bar the night before what the duck tour was but we thought the barmaid might be pulling our legs but she wasn't. So you get into this big aquatic vehicle that looks like a, a boat bus but also has a massive duck on it and each of us got given these duck bills which you could blow into. And this was actually a really fun part of the trip and we got to see a lot of Austin and we also got to see a lot of the river itself as well and the dam holding up the river. There's an odd thing where they were listing all of the, the names of the people that live on the riverbank and uh, how much their houses are worth. And for me, it was just like, okay, there's a guy's house there for $10 million. It was like, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I get the sort of fun factor of that. I, I mean, it's probably something that they do in the UK as well if you went along the coast and saw some massive houses. Um, but maybe it's a bit of an American thing as well, looking at sort of the the uh, the end of the road of the land of freedom and getting to the top, I don't know. It was interesting anyway, and when we came out again, actually looking around the city was probably the most fun part, seeing the uh, whole of Austin sweep past and the, the beautiful skyline that is there. It's not a huge city, um, but very green. Like really unexpectedly for me, I thought Texas would be a lot more of a, like a beige color, and almost sandy and deserty. But in this area, in the hill country, it was extremely green. And we got finally to eat at Gyro's Taco Bar, or Guerreros, I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce it. Had Mexican food for, for the first time properly. I'm not usually that great with spice, so it was a, a bit of a jump into the water for me. But it was all very nice. And also we had several... Basically the, the menu of drinks was pretty much you have tequila, tequila, or tequila. So I had some tequila. And that was pretty much day three. And on to day four, us UK lot had a massive journey ahead of us. And we got checked out. We took a long, sleepless journey back to the UK. And I'd like to say again, thank you to MSI for all of this. And it was an amazing trip and an amazing opportunity. And I've not been to Texas before. And it was a beautiful place. The people were so friendly. And 
AMD's headquarters were awesome and making uh, computers for a long time in my life. Obviously, I flipped between Intel, AMD, depending on the prices, on the performance and things like that. Obviously, Ryzen's come in again. It's actually at the forefront again of definitely the price for performance. And seeing all of the people working hard on that, things that I've used since I was a kid, was pretty damn awesome. And alongside MSI as well, like I've said before, I've had a, an MSI build for a very long time. They actually noticed me because of my really old bolt build video with, I think I had the, an MSI motherboard and a graphics card, it was a, a 970 I think, and they started sending me some review copies and eventually it was like, well, maybe we should do the sponsorship thing instead. And we went out on this trip and it was pretty damn awesome. Also, I haven't really done vlogs before, so this was my attempt into the vlogging world. So be sure to let me know what you thought below and whether or not you enjoyed this. And thank you all very much for watching. Like if you did enjoy it, subscribe for more of my content, and I'll see you all next time. Joshino out.